All right there, welcome to part eight. We're going to try and get this um, animation that we've made, uh, these three animations, into Unity. So um, we finished off the animations. Make sure that you've saved everything. Um, we're just going to export them straight out. So remember the numbers that we used for the uh, particular clips. We're going to need those again. So it was um, 1 to 121 for the idle. Um, if yours is different, just take a note of them. Uh, we had a short 160 to 170 for the walk and a 180 to 185 for the attack. So we're going to remember those because we're going to need them. So if I just export this now, if I click on, uh, I'll make sure it's saved obviously, first of all, and then um, file and export and choose FBX. Now, um, we've already got one from the last time when we tested it, but um, I'm going to save this as a as the, the Spider-07. Um, the FBX export options, if you go through them over here on the left hand side. Um, you'll see here that the, the main one is selected objects and um, some of these other ones. We're just going to leave them alone. Uh, you need to make sure that you select the armature and the mesh. So you hold shift and you click. You don't need lamps and cameras and empties and others. And I've also ticked this experimental apply transform um, like we did last time. And it seems to work OK um, for this model. It um, may not work for yours. If it doesn't, then don't worry about it. Just untick it and try again. Uh, the last thing, um, leave geometries as it is. So we're going to apply all the modifiers, the armatures. Leave that as it is. This should sort everything else out for us. And in animations, leave all those on. Uh, and then we're good to go. So if I click on export FBX up the top right hand side, it should export that into the uh, correct folder. Now you, you can see, I'll bring my folder over, so you can see I've got this um, Spider 07 FBX. I've also got the two materials that we made um, the last time around um, when we were doing the, the bump painting and the color painting. So all I really need is this Spider 07. So I've already got my Unity project up and running. Um, the I've deleted everything out of it but left those two materials in. You still need them in. Um, and I'm just going to drag this Spider 07 FBX in. And then we'll look at some of those import options. So the uh, just like we did the last time, we're going to um, look through some of the import options and make sure that these are all correctly set. So you can see from, um, first of all, the model, we should have everything all left as it is. The, the rig, we're going to leave it as generic. Um, we can't have anything else because it's not your standard rig. The animations we're going to sort out in a second. For the materials, uh, you need to do what we did last time and just extract the materials and just choose the same location. You'll see that it puts the material here. The um, normal map or the bump map that we had before, uh, we need to make sure that we've changed the normal map to uh, it was if it was default it would be a black and white one but if you change it to normal map and then just choose create from grayscale and I bumped this right down to um, 0 0.1 because it just looked a bit weird when I um, when I put it on. Um, to test that everything works you just drag it onto your scene and you should see it in the middle and the material that we extracted just make sure you put the normal map on um, and then you can see all the bumps and lumps that we uh, created inside of Blender. So the uh, spider looks okay, but the animations aren't quite right. Um, if we open up the little spider, we'll see here that we only have a single animation, and that's not quite right. So if we go to the animation tab on the top right, you'll see that we have this current uh, animation clip. It's just one single clip, which was our entire frames, all of the frames in the animation between 0 and 185. We're going to change those. So first of all, uh, the first one that I had was idle. Um, so I'm just going to type in idle for the name of it. And I'm going to do start frame was 1 and the end frame was 121, but I'm going to make it 120 as we talked about before, so we don't sh show the first frame again. And we want this to loop, so we click on loop time. Um, we need another animation clip, so hit the plus um, just underneath the idle. Um, and then again, rename this. So the next one was walk, and the number of the frame numbers were 160. To 169, so mine's was up to 170, but um, I'm going to take it to 169 so that we don't have that frame again. And again, we want that one to loop. And the last one was attack. So once again, rename that. So we'll click attack. We will add the frames. Uh, mine's was 180 
to 185 and click apply. Oh, um, I think we do want this one. No, we don't want this one to loop. Well, we can play with this later, but um, we'll say no. Uh, we have now applied that um, so all the animation should appear inside of the FBX. So we should set up the animator now in order to get it to work. If you press play, your game won't, the uh, spider won't do anything because we don't have the animator set up. If you click on the spider 07 or the name of your spider, you'll see that the controller uh, says none. So we need to create one. So I'm just going to right click on a space in the assets folder, click create and choose animator controller. And then I'm going to call this um, spider animator because that's what it is. And then with the spider 07 selected, I'm going to drag the spider animator into the slot for the controller on the animator component. So the spider animator is what's going to control the transition between these three different things. And we may as well set it up and test it. So if we double click um, the animator controller, you should uh, see the basic animator controller in the, the main window here. Um, the default state that we want to be in is idle, so if you have the spider opened up, you'll see the three I uh, animation clips in there. So we'll drag the idle state and just put it straight out. Um, by default, that will create it as the default state. So at entry point, it will go straight to idle. And we'll use parameters to set up um, transitions to the other um, the other states. So the first parameter I'm going to add, if I click on the left hand side of the animator where it says parameters, click plus, and I'm going to choose um, a bool. That's a true and a false value. And we're going to call this walking. Um, then we can use this to jump to the state from idle to walking. So we'll take this walk animation clip, we'll drag it out onto the animator. I'm just going to put it just slightly above not off to the right here, and um, we're going to create a transition from idle to walk. So the way you do that is you right click on idle, you click make transition, and you drag the line to walk. Now the transition is the line in the middle. So um, if you click on the line you'll see a few more options appear in the inspector. Um, the first one is has exit time. So this means do you want to finish this clip before transitioning to the other? So I'm going to say no. Uh, when it want, when it walks, I don't want it to have to finish that idle. I want it to just go straight away. And it complains that there's no condition. So um, down in the conditions where it says list is empty, hit plus, and it puts in the one uh, condition that we have, uh, which is walking. And right here, it's we'll make sure that it's set to true. So when you are walking or when that parameter is set to walking it will transition to this walk animation. We obviously need to be able to go back so uh, the opposite of that is if you right click on walk, click make transition and click back to idle and then click on the, the line, the arrow between them and we'll say again it doesn't have an exit time so we want to go straight back. The conditions where it says list is empty hit plus and change walking to false so if the parameter is set to false, then I'll move back to idle. So we can test this, and the easiest way without having to write any code to test this is, um, oh yeah, we can see down here actually, there's a preview of the animations, um, and you can see what they are. Uh, but we'll, uh, we can actually see them if we click on Spider07 as well, you can see the different clips and see if they're working okay. So, you know, probably should have talked about that before, but um, it loops them and everything so that you should see that they're working okay because uh, I tested this already, um, I was fairly happy with it. I wasn't particularly happy about the attack, but we'll, I'll cover that in a few seconds when we get into creating the animator controller. So, to test this uh, without having to write code, if we click on the, if we drag the tab for animator, I'm just going to dock it to the left hand side of the game scene, the main scene. So, that way I can still see this parameter, but I can also see the game. Um, so, when I hit play, um, we should see the uh, the idle animation playing on the spider and the camera is not in a great position but at least we can see what's happening so the idle animation is playing and if everything worked well if I click walking it should immediately change to walking and then if I untick again it should go straight back to idle so far so good it's worked with that much and the last thing would be to set up the um, attack animator. So um, I'll need to unplay this so we can make changes. 
Um, I'm going to leave these kind of docked so I don't have to uh, redock them again. Um, for the attack animation, we want to go from either idle or walk, in theory, to the attack. So I'm going to drag the attack and I'm going to create the transition from any state to attack. So that means, so from any one of walk or idle or anything else that you happen to be doing, you can go from any state to a particular animation state. So um, if I uh, right click on the any state, say make transition and go straight to attack. Um, the transition we want to create a, tra a transition condition. So we don't have one right now and um, I played around with a couple of little different ones and I want to show you this one but um, all we're going to do is we're going to make it attack once um, and then we'll, it should we should transition to one of the other ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in another parameter and this time it's going to be trigger. I'm just going to say trigger and we're going to call this um, attack so we can uh, trigger an attack in code. Um, this one, the way triggers work is they're not true and false, so when you click it on, it immediately switches off as soon as it's been activated, so that it's great for something like dying or um, or for attacking, where it just does that one thing once, and then it can transition to anywhere else after that. So we have the attack transition. Um, if you click on the line between any state and attack, and make sure that the condition is set to attack. So you just use a little drop down, click attack, that means when this gets triggered, when uh, we trigger this in code, it will do the attack animation. Now, it will pause, it. this isn't a looping animation, so we want it to be able to transition back to these ones. So I'm going to uh, select it again, right click, make a transition and choose one for idle. So um, if you click on the transition line, you'll see that the the has exit time is there. So basically when it's finished its attack animation, um, it will go to uh, idle. Um, we need to make sure that we go to either idle or walk. We may, in theory, be able to be in any one of those states while we attack. So it's not the best setup, but we'll uh, we'll get it working and then we'll, we can make some improvements later. But if we click on conditions where it says list is empty and we'll go to idle if walking is false. So if we've finished the attack and walking is false, it will go to idle. For the walking, we'll again make a transition to the walk, click on the line again, check that has exit time is set, so when it's finished the attack animation, uh, the condition would be that walking would be true. And then when it's finished attack, if the walking um, boolean is set to true, it will go straight to the walk animation. So to test this in action, we can hit play. We can look at the results by I'm going to select the spider so we can see what's happening. I actually see it's what, what um, animation it's currently playing and where it is along that animation. If I click walking, it should jump straight to walking. If I untick, it should go back to idle. If I click attack, it should attack. Now it attacked really quickly, almost too fast to see. Um, and I think that's because there's so few frames in the attack animation. So I'm going to show you a little trick. We could go back into Blender and change it and uh, I maybe recommend that you do that. But another trick that you can do if you if you just want a small tweak is this attack um, clip here has a speed option in the um, in the inspector inside of the animator. So if I make the speed a lot less, so maybe 0 0.2, then um, and leave everything else the same, what you'll see is it'll just play it uh, at 0 0.2 of the real speed of it. So once again. Um, let's see this in action. If I select on the spider, you'll see what's happening. If I play the attack animation, it'll go a lot slower. Um, and it transitions to idle again if it's not attacking. If you keep clicking attack, um, which might happen in code, it may glitch out a little bit like this. But um, we'll see um, when we do this if we need to make any tweaks in code. So basically, you've set up the entire thing. Um, the animator now works. As expected, it's able to walk, it's able to uh, idle and transition to attack as well. And that's basically it for setting up the animation. The next bit of the video is going to be uh, writing the code to um, do some AI uh, to have the spider detect the player and move towards it and attack it if it gets close enough. I hope you're enjoying the video series and stick with us. Cheers.